Nice Kodak Retina 3C. Looks pretty enough. It's not well. They're not supposed to look like that. Shutter doesn't cock. Lever doesn't seem to complete. Certainly doesn't return to the rest position. Something is not happy in this camera. Well, let's have the top off and find out what there is to see. The back catch doesn't want to release. So the back stuck. That's interesting. Let's look a bit closer. Is it a swimmer? Doesn't appear to be. You can see that this hinge screw for the door here at some stage is backed out through the leatherettes. But I can't get the back open. Alright, let's take this off and see if there's anything to see. That all looks tidy enough, nothing broken there. This buttons, it just need us more of a push. Oh look. The end here. I'll zoom you in a bit. This. It's been dropped on its end. This is crushed into the body at that point. That's probably why it doesn't want to release. Let's slide a rule under there. Yeah, that's it. So the end of the door is damaged. It was simply jammed in hard against that leatherette. That's going to need some straightening out. Alright, that answers that little question. We'll carry on and open this camera up and see what else we discover. So I've got to remove the knob from the top of the meter. I'm just checking to see where that is. It doesn't appear to me that that's the correct position. I suspect that meter is not accurate. The ASA scale isn't where I would expect to see it. Let's pop these pieces to one side. The rewind knob, which is what I came to get when the back wouldn't open. Let's put something through the fork, unscrew that with my fingers. That's got a bit of a wobbly feel to it. I think that's been dropped on its head. This camera, I think, is a bouncer. I think it's bounced along the ground. Single screw at the end. Two screws on the top of the top cover here. Those three screws are all chrome brass, easily damaged. Hold your finger on the top of the meter before you lift the top off the camera, otherwise the meter will lift off with it, potentially causing problems. Nothing to see there. Meter's just hooked in under the bracket in this case. That looks tidy enough. Let's take off the film release button. look at the film advance at this stage that rack is out of time here it looks complete but it's not timed correctly looks like someone may have been playing we'll remove the strap plug at this end This is quite black in here. That little brass spacer washer, that's present on some 3Cs, by no means all of them.
I'm going to see if I can lift this rack up and off that gear to see if the film advance will complete. Just slacken this off. I don't know whether this has been off. Someone may have had a go at this. I don't want to lift it from contacting the transfer shaft at this end particularly. Let's see if I can lift this rack. I can. Check that the film advance will swing. It will. And if I reconnect my cocking rack, will that drop in for me? Oh, there's a lot of play in that shaft there. That screw's loose. That's half the reason for that. That screw's loose on the other side too. Let's see if I can get this rack to drop into place there. It doesn't really want to go. I think that should be just along to the next tooth probably. That rack might even be bent slightly there. Let me back that screw up a little bit. That shaft might be bent too. Let's drop it in there. It may not complete the stroke at that point. You may be too far along. Let's find out. It doesn't want to rip. It doesn't want to come back the other way. The rack's teeth look a little bit damaged there. But it sounded like it cocked the shutter. Oh, well, let's take the rack out completely. Have a proper look at it. I think... Looking at what I see that the rack is slightly damaged, that the teeth are slightly distorted, and the reason for that, yeah, they're certainly damaged. The reason for that would have been that the two, let's take this off so you can see. I'll just take this strap lug off at this end and remove the chrome trim make it easier to see what's going on here. Right, this screw and this screw which hold the bush on the top of the film advance shaft were loose. So the whole shaft can move backwards and forwards increasing the uh, lash of the gear at this point to the point where it was able to skip over the teeth and looking at the rack here now, so I can wipe some of that grease off it, I can see that those teeth are damaged at that point right there. So it certainly really, really needs a new rack. I don't think that one can be rescued. But the main cause of the problem is almost certainly that this was free to flop backwards and forwards. If the rack had been in even average condition and the film advance was pulled to the back, which would be holding it in close contact with that rack, of course. That would have had the teeth in good mesh with this gear. In fact, it's, it's more than tight enough there. And those teeth would never have stripped. So loose screws have done to this camera. And... Uh, That'll need to be dealt with. Of course that might not be the only problem, but it's certainly a good place to start. Looking at the position of this curved rack here, that's certainly 
wandered a long way from the, the rest position. But that could have happened just when I removed that piece. Okay, so what else can we tell from this camera? It's got some history. It's clear that it's been serviced before because this is not the original adhesive on the uh, end of the film advance lever. Which means that someone's had the leatherette patch off at some stage and re-glued it. Of course it's not even present anymore. The little hole in the leatherette at this point here points to the screw having backed out of the door at some stage. So the door hinge may or may not have been wobbling about. Just reach for the scalpel and get this leatherette off. The leatherette's lifting off quite easily. Which might mean the adhesive was simply um, quite good, quite conservative in its stickiness. It might mean there's corrosion under here. And probably a bit of both. Let's see if loose screws are a, a problem with this camera. I'd expect the tripod socket screws to be loose and they're not. We'll have a look at the hinge pin screw in this door and see if that's loose. It was uh, less than a quarter of a turn to, to completely tight. So the screw may have backed out at some stage, but somebody had fixed that. The state of the leatherette and the adhesive on the bottom of this camera, I I'm not sure whether that means the leatherette's been off before or not. It doesn't look like an extra layer of adhesive there. Now one of these screws is very reluctant to come out. I can get about a quarter of a turn from it and then it wants to stop. I'm just going to put a, a spot of uh, solvent on there, naphtha. It's very unusual. It's, it has the feel of a screw that's been cross-threaded. It's coming out. It doesn't sit flat on the surface very well. I'm looking at the state of that. No, it doesn't look particularly bad to tell the truth. Alright, just off with that trim. Anything else of note here? Any loose screws? Well, they're not over tight, but they, they're not wobbling loose, so that's okay. So it's a bit of an anomaly that the screws at the top here were loose. Nothing else yeah, those screws are a bit loose, but it's not it's not overrun with loose screws. You do get cameras from time to time where everything is loose, and uh, in those cases, and you're scratching around for a, a reason for why that might be, 
The two probable causes are that the camera has been subject to an undue amount of vibration. I know of one person who had a camera that I'd serviced for him. He took it away on a motorcycle trip and by the time he'd done a few hundred miles around the place it was just about shaken to pieces. All the screws had worked their way loose. So vibration can certainly loosen up screws. The other thing which it probably has a similar effect is uh, excessive temperature cycling. If you had a camera sitting somewhere say uh, in a window so it baked in the sun during the day and at night it chilled down to zero that temperature cycling would almost certainly loosen the screws given enough time. However, that aside, I've got to get into this camera and um, strip it down, clean it, put everything back together. I won't know until I've got this little gear here nicely cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner whether or not that's still good or whether that'll need replacement. Certainly this rack doesn't look especially hopeful, but we shall see. Well I'm just separating these pieces to put some in the ultrasonic cleaner and I think I noted that the rewind appeared to be bent and this should screw straight in here but it's very reluctant to move and the, the thread is stripped at the top I can tell so bad things have happened to that screw I'm holding it up to the light to see if it looks out of square. It doesn't really. I think that someone's over tightened it and stripped the thread at the top of that screw. I'll know more once I get that apart. But that could take some work. What I'll have to do is load this up on a block so that I'm pressing hard on the underside and then unscrew it from the top and hopefully that'll cause that thread to engage and wind out. Of course if it doesn't I'll be looking for a, a new chrome screw. For oh, it is coming out, it's very reluctant. Now we're into some working thread. Yeah, there's some pieces of stray metal there from that thread. Yeah. As I expected, I'll zoom you in a bit. Shift that. As I expected, the thread at this portion here is effectively gone. Now most likely someone over tightened that. It certainly runs on okay up till there. This will probably not uh, cause me any serious problem. Put that in for the cleaning. Things like this I never put through the ultrasonic cleaner because first of all the name plate deck tackle here with the uh, film types on it is only glued in here and that would almost certainly come adrift um, but if that didn't happen then very likely the painted markings would lose some of their sharpness if, if they don't disappear entirely. Likewise little pieces like this it's got a tiny little black square on there as a marker that black square would disappear. The washer here in that uh, Rewind assembly, a little bit rusty looking. Mostly that'll go away in the cleaner. All right, back to the camera. Where are we with this? Well, I think that the rangefinder should come off next. Of course, there are two screws. Getting your screwdriver to engage with those screws is sometimes tricky. I 
and you've got to be cautious where you're putting the screwdriver so you don't damage that mirror over here in particular. So that's my range finder, I'll put that aside. That most certainly does not go through the ultrasonic cleaner, not entirely, not in one piece. Two screws hold the rewind in place. The shaft should come out of the bush. And the centre of the shaft should come out too. Back to the camera body. I'm going to take that screw off the top of the film advance shaft there. The little pinion gear there on the top of course, I'm very interested in the state of that. To see if it's still any good. That's the little the drive dog that uh, drives the film advance shaft around the take-up spool. Take this gear off. Two screws hold that bush in place at the top. Now that one was loose. It may also be bent. That I don't know yet. In cases where there's excessive space or excessive um, gap between the rack and the gear at the top of the camera sometimes people lean on that screw to bend it inwards so that it pushes the rack closer to the gear of course it very rarely stays there when you do things like that and uh, in fact if you've got a bent screw and if it turns slightly in either direction after that point of course then obviously it's going to be swinging away and causing you trouble Now the shutter release shaft, I've got that still in the camera and that's a good thing to have. If you were working on the camera, I'm taking this completely to pieces of course, that doesn't make much difference to me, but if you were working on the camera and you weren't taking it all to pieces, it's important you never remove this from the camera. It passes through the casting, through a lever, I'll show you that lever a lever on the side of the shutter housing and from there it operates the shutter itself on the the release on the shutter. Let's remove this here. So you can see it here. Here's our shaft. It passes through the body, through a guide here, and through this piece, which is a sleeve at this point. In fact, I think it might even be called the sleeve. And that sleeve acts on this arm here. And that arm fires our shutter, release right on the shutter itself. Now if that sleeve if you lift this film advance, let's just put this washer to one side before I lose it. There's also a return spring here. I'll zoom you in a bit. Alright, so there's a return spring here. This is not always present in all cameras, it's there in, in some. If you lift out the film advance shaft, uh, the shutter release shaft, this is very very sticky by the way if you lift that out that spring is no longer firmly attached what tends to happen is that it'll come adrift and when it comes adrift, I'm taking that out, well, it falls down into the gap here and that gets in between the shroud and the camera the cavity of the body itself around the bellows and if you just lose the spring and you put things back together you may not even notice the shutter will continue to work well enough but you may discover that you can't 
fully open or fully close the front door. And that's because that spring has a nasty tendency to get trapped inside the shroud between this uh, lens mount here, the lens standard, and that black shroud. And it stops the lens standard from pulling right out to the fully locked position. So that's, that's quite a common problem. And uh, even if it does pull out all the way, you may find that it sits slightly cock-eyed because it's got a crushed spring wedging, wedged in one side or the other. But the other and more se severe problem is if this piece here falls out. If that falls out of position, it may only be able to fall out of position if the shutter is cocked here, and I don't know whether we can get that shutter cocked. I'll have a go. See if I can move that rack round enough to cock the shutter. Right. Indulge in one or two illegitimate practices here. I think that shutter's cocked. If the shutter's cocked, it means that the shutter release lever here would be able to be depressed. No, it won't. So the shutter's not cocked. Let me have another go at it. Of course, there may be a an underlying problem here with the shutter anyway. That time I think. If the shutter is cocked, the shutter release button here could be depressed. If the shutter release shaft there is depressed like that, this finger is no longer held securely, this sleeve, and it can drop out. When it drops out, it almost always falls straight in the back there and jams things up in a very, very efficient fashion. However, that's not going to do it for us today because that's because I'm trying to demonstrate it. So we won't, we'll ignore that little problem. It's not going to happen. I'm going to remove the clip from the lock lever. The lock lever's job is to lock the film advance when it reaches frame number one. I'll remove the screw and spring from the top of the release lever. The release lever's job is to release the film advance to allow you to wind on to the next shot after you've fired the shutter. Now you can come out the bottom of the camera. And I'll recover the spring from the uh, release lever so that it doesn't get lost while I'm cleaning things. Where are we now? Oh, I'll get the rewind button off this camera next, I think. So I want my pliers for that. Because this back doesn't want to come open, I keep forgetting that. Right, so the rewind button. I'll use my special pliers to grasp that. And the special pliers, which I've probably mentioned a million times before, are just a cheap pair of needle nose pliers. I cut the end off, stuck them in a vise, drilled a hole down the end there, the right size to an hold that rewind button. As it turns out it's the right size for a few other little jobs so it's a very handy pair of pliers. Right, the so single screw holds the shaft, the sprocket shaft and the sprocket together. So we'll have that out. That's our guide bush from the top of the film advance. Here's our sprocket. This is the clutch assembly for the film advance. That's a bit dry feeling. It certainly needs to be lubricated better than that. And at the base of the camera, I'll unhook that spring here. This is the button, the lock 
for our rewind button. When you press the rewind button and that little lock drops in and into place to stop you having to keep your finger on the rewind button while you're rewinding the film. Which is a handy feature. Not all of the old cameras had that. There's three screws visible through holes in the bottom of the film advance. Those screws hold the bush on the film advance shaft to the camera body. Those screws were not tight but they were by no means loose. If those screws are loose you end up with a, a somewhat wobbly film advance lever on the bottom of the camera and that can have unwanted effects. Get this camera back open again. I'm getting tired of this game. There ball and the bush from it. This camera back, that's a, that's a nuisance. I'm going to get a pair of uh, pliers on here and straighten that up. <laughs> 